everybody, and welcome to Lesson 8.3 in the Alice Tutorial Series. Today, uh, we're going to continue what we started in Lesson 8.2, which is dummy camera manipulation. But that last lesson went a little bit long, and I wanted to create a scene in which we use the vehicle property of a dummy camera. And there's some tricks to it, and um, it's something that you'll practice and you'll definitely get better at. But the idea that you can attach a camera to an object and have it permanently affixed, so as the object moves throughout the scene, the camera stays at a usable angle, is a pretty powerful tool that you can use. Once you have dummy cameras in and you start adding composite actions, you're really getting to the point where you can make some advanced scenes that have multiple bits of action going on at different parts of the world and using dummy cameras you can switch back and forth. We're going to create a scene here in Alice and take a look at how to use the vehicle properties of a dummy camera. So let's go ahead and get started with lesson 8.3. So here we go, I'm in a new Alice world and before we get started in this new Alice world, my idea is to have a car kind of making a slow drive across the countryside. And I want to find a good usable road tile, and I'm going to do this through billboards. I'm going to head over to Google and do a search for road PNG and get an image search. And I'm going to look for a usable road image that it kind of works from the top down. Now this isn't the perfect scenario, but I think I like this uh, this guy right here, the 600 by 600 road. So click on that, right click it, and let's go ahead and save it because we're going to be using it as an image later. So in my Alice textures, I'm going to name this uh, street.png. Go ahead and hit save, and now we have access to that and we just need to import it as a as a uh, billboard. And that's what we're going to do. So go up to File, let's make a billboard, and um, let's find our textures folder here. And we named it Street. So here's my street graphic. And I'm going to add this right here. Go ahead and have it turn to face the camera. And adjust this so that it's on the ground. Now I'm going to go ahead and fast forward through this next piece because what I want to do is like resize this and I'm just going to end up making a, a bunch of copies of this so that I can make uh, a road that travels for quite some distance and rather than scale it so that it loses its uh, properties I'm just going to make a, a number of copies of this and send it off in the distance so you don't need to see that we'll go ahead and do that uh, in an accelerated fashion. Okay, with our road being laid, um, that should be long enough for what we want to do. I want to clean up this objects panel a little bit because I have nine different streets. I'm going to right click in my objects panel, select create new group, and I'm going to rename this road objects. Then I'm going to take all of my road objects, all of these streets, and put them into road objects. And the reason I'm going to do that is so they don't clog up this uh, object view here uh, and this will stop me from having to, to scroll a lot when I see uh, say add a car or add some trees and things like that. The next thing I'm going to do is decorate this road a little bit by adding trees to the side. My, my idea is to have a car driving from left to right and as they drive I don't just want this boring horizon out here on the side I want to add some trees. So let's go ahead and uh, create some trees and stuff on this side of the road and maybe some bushes on this side so that we have some things for the cars to pass. So let's go ahead and uh, speed that up, but let's build that part of the scene now.
so I'm just going to add a little bit more flair to the scene. I think I want a kind of a pinkish background, and I'm going to play with the fog settings just a little bit so that... I know, my goal is to make it look more like a sunset, and I, I could do that by adding maybe a sun object through a billboard, but um, I, th I think this will work right here. So let's go ahead and change the uh, fog style to distance. Let's try 128, and that, that looks about right. So I don't have the typical blue background. I've kind of softened that up a little bit. The next thing I'm going to do is head over to the vehicles gallery. Let's go ahead and get rid of that right there. And I'm going to add, I think, the station wagon. So let's get a station wagon. The idea of the scene is that the station wagon is going to travel down the road. So let's get it positioned so that it's going to travel down the road. It's going to drive real slowly, but while that's going on, the camera will will pan a little bit and follow the car and, and give it a little bit of style. So let's make sure we have it uh, placed here properly. And... Looking for the station wagon. Oh, there it is. Okay, so we, we're going to select the station wagon object, and we're going to tell it that we want it to move forward down the road. And for right now, let's just go ahead and try how 30 meters works over a duration of, let's say, 30 seconds. Now, 30 meters might end up being a little bit too short for the amount of road we created, but in the end, we can always make it a little bit longer if we want. You can see the car is traveling down the road. Now, I might not have it exactly centered because it looks like it's veering off to the right of the road a little bit. But the speed in general looks pretty good. Let's uh, adjust the camera and get behind the car and make sure that we've got it pointed straight down the road. It is definitely veering a little bit, so we'll move it over and send it directly down the road. Perfect. And get our camera back to its original starting position. And we've got that set up there. Okay, so we've got the car moving. And what I want to do now is animate the wheels. Add a do together stage st statement. And while you're doing that, we want to animate. And we're just going to worry about the right wheels. Um, the, we're not going to see the left wheels in this animation. So let's add uh, a turn command, turn forward, and try 15 revolutions. Let's see if 15 revolutions will, will work for the back right wheel. And we'll do that over the same 30 seconds that the station wagon will be moving forward. Then I want to grab the back left wheel and have that turn forward by 15 revolutions over 30 seconds. Now let's hit play and see how that looks. Now that looks like it will be about okay. The wheels might be spinning a little bit fast, but we can fix that just by uh, maybe kicking those down to maybe 12.5 revolutions, and that'll probably make the car look like it's realistically rolling. Now, as always, you can adjust the other wheels if you want, but since I'm not going to have those in the scene, I'm not going to bother to code those. Now, I want to set up the scene where the car is going to start driving off the road to the right, and let's drop a camera here. So this will be our starting point. This camera will represent the start of the animation, we're going to rename that dummy camera, and let's call it Starting Position. So this is where the car is going to start animating and drive forward, kind of towards the right-hand side of the screen. And that's how our animation will start. That looks pretty good right there. The car is going to drive off, and what we want to do is drop another camera at the same spot. I'm going to call that camera uh, car right side. The difference with this dummy camera is I'm going to set the property, go to vehicle, and set the vehicle property to the station wagon. So let's find this, the station wagon. There it is. So that dummy camera is now going to be moving with the station wagon. As the station wagon tra travels, so too will the dummy camera. Okay, so we've got the dummy camera attached to the right-hand side of the car. And I'm going to add a do in order statement. And this do in order is going to be my camera controls. So let's add a comment. And we're going to say that this do in order statement handles camera manipulations during the animation. The animation is 30 seconds, so I have 30 seconds to play with. The first thing I want the camera to do is wait about 4 seconds. 
This will give the car time to drive off to the right a little bit without the camera moving at all. As the camera gets moving, I want the camera to pan to that car right side camera. So let's go up to the camera and we're going to give it the set point of view 2 command. So camera set point of view 2 and we want it to move to our dummy camera the car on the car's right side and we want this to happen over about seven seconds. So the car will be moving for about four seconds with a stationary camera then the camera will catch up to the dummy camera and align its view with where the dummy camera was originally placed. So we can see the camera starts to move with the car. But we're going to have an error here. After the seven seconds is over, the car just drives off the side of the screen. This is a really important step that you can't forget to do. Once the camera gets to the dummy camera, the dummy camera keeps moving, but the actual camera, what's giving us the scene, is not attached to anything but the world. So after the camera gets to the car's right side, we want to set the vehicle to the car's right side so the camera will continue to move matched with the dummy camera. So the camera should move for four seconds. Over the course of seven seconds, the camera will shift to the car's right side. And after it gets to our dummy camera, it will then attach itself to that as a vehicle and continue to move as the car drives. So you can see here the car is driving, the camera gets to the right spot, and there it goes. It's now attached to the right side. And as long as the car is moving forward, our camera will be attached to the dummy camera, which is attached to the right side of the car. So let's adjust this camera and add a second dummy camera. I want this one kind of centered on the front side of the car, uh, maybe off the front fender, and something like, yeah, that looks like it should be about good, so let's adjust the camera. Go to Add Objects, drop Dummy at Camera. That will create our Dummy Camera object there in our Dummy Objects folder. And I'm going to rename this camera, uh, let's see, we'll call this Car front, front View. I now have a Dummy Camera attached to the car. I'm going to have this animation wait for about seven seconds. So the camera will stay on the car's right side for seven seconds. And then we're going to have the camera switch its point of view to our new dummy camera, which is on the front side of the car. So this will create a bit of a sweeping action from the back of the car to the front of, car, uh, front of the car, but keep the car centered in the view. And we want this to happen for about five seconds. Afterwards, we want to set the camera's vehicle property to the car front view. Now, once I start this animation, uh, there is a, a very common mistake that was made, and I, I, that's made in this, this little section right here. The camera does change its point of view to the car front view, and the camera does pan to car front view. But one thing I forgot to do was set the vehicle property of our new dummy camera to the camera itself. Uh, another thing that I, I failed to do was move the camera back to the starting position for the start of the animation. So I'm going to have the camera move back to the starting position. We'll hit play. Our, our car starts to drive off. The camera correctly picks up our first dummy camera, attaches itself as a vehicle properly, and now when it starts to move to the car's front side, we get a really weird effect. And that was just because I wasn't quite paying attention. When I added this, that dummy camera, when I added car front side, I forgot to set its vehicle to the car as well. So as the car moved forward, our dummy camera stayed stationary. So make sure that your car front view camera is also attached to the car so that it moves along with the car while it's being animated. So in this run through right here, we'll have the camera tail the car, pick up the other dummy camera, pause, it should start sweeping towards the front view dummy camera. And there it goes. So we've got that dummy camera picked up. And then we're going to switch the camera's vehicle to the station wagon. So that's the vehicle property of dummy cameras. We're going to go ahead and move now to the Lesson 8.3 Challenge program, where we're going to see what did you pick up 
while we did this lesson. Okay, what you're looking at here is the Lesson 8.3 Challenge Program. And the challenge of this program is going to be to make the dropship object land on a landing pad. Now, there's really a lot you can do with this scene. Uh, I didn't do a lot in the way of added scenery. I did add some stars to the background and downloaded a little bit of a landing pad off the internet to add as a billboard for the ship to land on. But really, I spent most of my time animating the ship itself. As you can see, it starts with the dropship arms down. Uh, it kind of flies, it rolls in, so I used a couple roll commands. I've got a dummy camera attached to the front of the ship to handle this animation. And then it will break. As it comes to a stop, uh, I use the fire animation from the special effects gallery and set those to be visible as the arms turn to the landing position. And then I have a third dummy camera attached to the side of the dropship that handles the landing. Your job in the Lesson 8.3 Challenge program is to recreate a scene similar to this using the vehicle properties of uh, dummy cameras and using dummy cameras in general to make a, an animated scene that doesn't take place all in one area. You want to have the camera move around and have multiple objects doing multiple things similar to what you're seeing here. This drop ship ends up moving somewhere in the vicinity of about 70 meters, between 70 and 100 meters altogether, and I'm able to keep a handle on my animation by properly placing dummy cameras. Your job is to create a scene similar to this right here. As always, if you have any challenges, any problems, or any questions, you are definitely welcome to leave those in the comments, and I will help you out any way that I can. As always, thank you so much for watching the Atlas Tutorial series, and have a great day.